This is breaking news. Earlier today, the Newark Firefighters Union gave an update on the two members who died while battling a cargo ship fire at Port Newark. Here's some of what they had to say. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming down. My name is Michael Junta, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-G-I-U-N-T-A. -E I'm the president of Newark Firefighters Union. I'm here to tell you that late Wednesday night, the Newark Fire Department responded to one of the worst fires in history. Sadly, two of our own firefighters, Augusto Augie Acabo and Wayne Bear Brooks Jr., battling the fire, succumbed to their injuries. They were dedicated public servants with combined 25 years for the Newark Fire Department. They were our colleagues, our friends, and our brother. <clears throat> Firefighting is a family. The Akabu family and the Brooks family are part of our family today and always will be forever. Line of duty deaths affect each and every one of us on a daily basis going forward. We're not here today to talk about the safety concerns of the North Fire Department. Um, at a later date, we will discuss that. We're here to talk about our brothers, Augie and Bear, so we can remember them going forward for the rest of our lives. There will be a time that we will address safety concerns and the issues behind our brothers' death. But today, we have to focus on our brother, Augie, and our brother, Wayne. So at the end, we'll take any kind of questions, but I want you to know that this union is focused on the families and what they're going through right now. And with that, I'd like to introduce my vice president, and personal friend that grew up with Augie from a little child, Eddie Paolo. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, uh, as you can imagine, the past 30 hours in this Newark firefighter family has been horrific. Everybody's uh, dealing with the grief. Everybody's trying to get through this horrible time. Um, I'm the Vice President of Newark Firefighters Union. My name is Eddie Paolo, E-D-D-I-E-P-A-U-L-O. Uh, but today I'm not wearing that hat. Today I'm wearing a, this press conference to, to bring some attention, uh, to let you guys know a little bit about the Brooks uh, family and a little bit about the Akabu family. Uh, I'm gonna shed a little light on uh, my personal friend, Augie. Both of them were friends of mine, but Augie was uh, a childhood friend of mine, and uh, I'd like to take that mask off and just let you know a little bit about him because the media's got uh, a job to do and, and trying to find out as much as possible about uh, both the fallen firefighters. Um, and I, I, I can't help but to think about, I got a text message from uh, somebody saying, uh, be what you love the most about who has passed. And when I started thinking about Augie, uh, I think that's, a, that's, that's almost impossible because they don't make him like him. Mm -hmm. He was tough as nails and sweet beyond belief. Augie leaves behind two brothers, João Akabu, Johnny, and Captain Michael Akabu of the Clark Fire uh, Police Department. Leaves behind two parents, Mr. and Mrs. Manuel and Maria Akabu. Leaves behind a sister-in-law, Marley Akabu. He leaves behind a nephew, which he adored, James Akabu. Augie was all about the family. Augie, Augie, you can find him at any family cookout, any family affair, he would do everything he can to attend. Augie was an amazing friend, uh, an amazing colleague, and that guy that walked away from any drama. That guy that uh, brought a light to, to any somber moment. I could tell you right now, if he was sitting in the room, uh, he'd be telling everybody, just smile, everything's gonna be all right. And that's the kind of guy Augie was. You know, in this profession, you Google the happiest jobs in the world, 
and the Newark, I'm sorry, and the fire department, firefighting is going to be at the top of the list. And that's because of a thing called brotherhood. And that brotherhood and sisterhood that we've been experiencing, getting uh, tremendous support calls from across the country, from the president to police departments, fire departments in New Jersey and across the country, uh, showing that brotherhood, showing that support. That has helped me and our brothers and sisters uh, keep going. And uh, at a later date, we will go on with more uh, as to what happened. But right today, uh, we want to share some uh, information about the Akabu family and the Brooks family. Uh, thank you, that's all I got. I'd like to introduce Uncle Roger Terry, who is the uncle of firefighter Wayne Brooks, Jr. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. And first of all, my condolence to the Akabu family. Uh, it's a very difficult time. I'm speaking for some of our family. I understand that Michelle may be caught in traffic, Wayne's wife, and is not here at this time. Uh, uh, we're a, a real close family. You know, uh, many of my children uh, are the same age as Wayne. So I look at Wayne just not like uh, my nephew, but he's like my son. And it's been a very, very difficult uh, day or so. No one's had much sleep at all. And uh, together as a family, we've been bounding and trying to make it through this terrible time. Uh, Wayne, he wanted to be a firefighter all of his life. He came out number one in his class as firefighter. He's a tremendous athlete also. When he graduated from St. Benedict's High, he was one of the top fencers in the state. He always kept himself in shape, a real life Superman. You know, the individual cared about all kinds of people. He could have had any job that he wanted in this region, but he picked being a firefighter because he liked working with people and helping people. And uh, because of that, you know, we do know the dangers and uh, unfortunately that he's lost his life as a result of that. But I've heard it said that greater had no man that lays his life down for another. So I know for a fact that in heaven, there's a special place for him. Uh, our hearts are broken, but uh, as I indicated, as a family, we'll keep on moving on. You know, uh, we're close knit, we'll work together, and we'll find a way in the next couple of uh, days, weeks, and months to get through this. Please, I ask everyone out there to continue to pray for the families of these two young men. We need a lot of prayer and uplifting, and uh, thank you very much. Michael Johnson from Ladder 4. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Johnson, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. -E um, I am part of Ladder 4 crews. Bear was an uh, amazing person. Great leader, great friend, great brother. Loved his family. Loved the job. Very hard time. Very tough time for us. But we're going to pull through. He's never forgotten. He's touched everybody's life in his department. Amazing friend, amazing brother. Excuse me for one second, regain my bearing. He is a man's man. Loved his wife, loved his kids. He loved the job more than anything. Respect his fellow man, 
respect a fellow woman who came on his job. Wayne Bear Brooks, Julia, you will never be forgotten. Most definitely. You'll always be light of war. Thank you. Captain Greg Meehan, also with Ladder 4. Hello. <sighs> my name is Greg Meehan, Captain of Ladder 4. Wayne was one of my guys. Mm. Didn't make this, this hard. I could stand up here all day talking about every good thing there is about Wayne. <laughs> Start out, he was son of a wonderful family, which showed through in everything he did with us at the firehouse. The way he cooked, the way he helped out, he was amazing. Un understatement, amazing. Brother, husband, just in every regard, number one guy. I know you're going to hear a lot of things as to great smile. Never found him without a smile. But, uh, all I can say is Mike, Soto, Tony, the rest of the crew, his name will be on our minds for the rest of our lives. There's no point where we're not going to remember Bear. He, he was one of a kind. As far as Augie goes, again, you're going to hear it time and time again. Upbeat, motivated, great, great individual. They were just taken from us too soon. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Carlos Henriquez, who is a cousin of firefighter Akabu. <clears throat> this is a statement from uh, Augie's family. Augie had a special way of reminding us of his love, whether it was his big hugs before he left for work or a simple I love you. Oh, Augie always made sure we felt his affection. In our grief, it is difficult to describe how deeply we love Augie. He is our world, and his untimely passing has left an unfathomable, unfathomable absence in our home. Augie's sense of honor was unparalleled. And he consistently exemplified this through his actions. Everything he did was about helping others, going above and beyond for those in need. He maintained a special bond with an assistant football coach from high school who was battling cancer, and Augie would often run errands and provide support for him during his treatments. We only just learned about that this week. Those were the little things Augie did for the people in his life. It was just the kind of person he was, someone who treated you like family. His infectious spirit brought joy wherever he went. At family parties, he entertained all the kids. As a boxer, he was over the moon when he spotted Muhammad Ali and posed for a photo together, pretending to throw a punch. Augie approached his work as a firefighter like he approached everything in life with dedication and passion. His commitment to the job was unwavering and his legacy will inspire those who follow in his footsteps. This is who Augie was. He would give you the shirt off his back. He was our hero. Who we will miss every day and continue to love forever. With that, we have some time for questions. I'd ask if you could just raise your hand and identify yourself with your name and your outlet. We'd be happy to start. Good afternoon again, Michael Junta, the president of North Firefighters Union. 
First of all, I'd like to thank all the municipalities, FDNY, who came to help us out. You know, Elizabeth uh, Fire Department, we work hand in hand with other municipalities on a daily basis to get the jobs done. Um, as my Vice President Eddie said, um, we, we uh, had Governor Murphy visit us, give us a call, we spoke to him personally. Um, President Joe Biden uh, gave us a call, want to know if we needed anything. Those are the outreach that we've had over the last couple of days and to help us through this tragedy. So if you have any questions, uh, also, I'm sorry, one, one other thing, we have a GoFundMe page and uh, we're trying to help the families out and uh, to see how, uh, what we can do for them uh, going forward. Kyle Nasser, UNF News. Did, did you get any indication from the president that at the appropriate time that he would visit the area, that he would visit your union or meet with the families in response to this tragedy? Yeah, it's, it's possible, but it's not confirmed right now. Um, he did make uh, 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 an invitation to the families if they're ever in Washington to come down. Yes, he did, to show them the Oval Office. And the president called both families as well. Yeah. When did he call the Washington? What's that? Uh, Stephen Nordoff, uh, Mr. Ledger. When did the president call? He called us yesterday. He, he called us uh, for our union and our fire department. Um, he uh, extended his condolences, gave us a couple stories about his personal stuff. And then he called Michelle um, and her family and also uh, the mother and father and the family of uh, Augie. Uh, and I was present for them. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it just show, goes to show you how far this extends across the country. Uh, did Mr. Um, Acabo and Mr. Bruce Jr. work together ever at all? Um, I'm sure at one time in their career, because remember, they had 25 years combined. Um, so they have cro crossed each other's paths, absolutely, um, because we worked in the same sector. Uh, you know, in the 5th Battalion here. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there is, there's someone here that could take you down there. I mean, I, I don't know how close you're going to get. The Port Authority has it all. Oh. Oh, I just meant, like, emotionally, what it was like. I understand. You know, I, I don't, you know what, I, I'd rather focus on the families and, and what we we're going through right now rather than go through the events of what happened. At a later date, all is that, you know, all that's going to be answered because like you have questions, I got a lot of questions and I want answers, okay? So that's going to happen in a later date, but for right now, let's really focus on the families and helping them get through things. There was just a big uh, press conference down at the port where the, uh, the U.S. Co Coast Guard, uh, you know, talked about the, the events and what happened like that. So let's leave that up to them for right now, and let's all get uh, help the families uh, get, get through this. How many children do you have? Mr. Brooks had two daughters, yeah, and uh, Augie didn't have any children. Um, dedicated son, still lives in the same house. Um, you know, with his mother and father and his family. They, they talked about how dedicated Augie was to his family. Mr. Brooks's daughters are right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Murdoch, <coughs> you followed immigration. We heard that the uh, services are in the works right now. Uh, I guess next week. Um, what do you want to tell the folks in New Jersey, in Newark, watching this, when these services happen? What, what should they What they take away is um, we are public servants. You know, we uh, protect our community. And we go to work every day not knowing if we're coming home, okay? And um, what I encourage them to do is just pray for the families, you know, and uh, pray for some peace in Newark right now, you know what I mean? Um, and just help us all move forward, you know? Just, you know, New Jersey needs to help us. And uh, as you can see behind me, this is how we, we're strong together. We have people that flew in from Washington, drove up from Washington. We have people here that drove from Massachusetts, flew from Boston. You know, that's the outpouring that we're getting and the support that we're getting because we all need it right now. We're trying to stay as strong as possible.
Sure. Uh, Captain Meehan, G-R-E-G, -E last name M-E-E-H-A-N. Anthony Leeds, C-A-R-L-O-S, H-E-N-R-I-Q-U-E-S. You got a question now? Yes, all, uh, all from the North Fire Department have been released. Okay, some minor injuries, but we do, you know, we did get a couple guys injured. Um, I really can't speak about the Elizabeth guys. There was a couple guys that went to the hospital. I hear they're doing a lot better. So uh, that's all I have on the injuries. Yeah. If they are, if they are able to, will the daughters of Miss Brooks, Victor Brooks, be able to share a personal story or, or a recap of maybe at a maybe at a later date. Right now, um, it's just too new, okay? And, you know, we gave you this opportunity to try to let them, you know, go through their process, you know? Um, and that's why we wanted to get the word out about Augie, you know, and give, give the reporters what they need, okay? It's not becoming so rare because we have brothers all around this country. It's becoming real raw for me. Uh, my experience when I first came on in 2000, I'm a 24 year veteran, and when I first came on, um, Lawrence Webb Jr. was killed in a fire. And I was in the academy with his brother. And we experienced that from day one. And that was a, that was a, a bad feeling, you know? today is multiplied. Um, this feeling I've never felt before in my life, you know, what we're going through. Because I have 400 brothers and sisters in this department. And then the outpouring and the outreach that has contacted me. I just, I'm overwhelmed with the phone calls. I can't even answer them until 12 o'clock at night. And I try to do my best to text everybody back, you know. Um, so it, it, it's getting hard. It really is getting hard, but we're working through it together. Anyone else? Yeah. Also, the IAFF Foundation is part of that. Okay, and. Um, for corporations or anybody who would like to donate that way. Um, uh, we're supporting these families just by being here. Um, there's an outpouring of people at each house. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Um, you know, just the outreach. And like we said, it goes as far as the president, you know, and he assured us that, you know, whatever support we need, you know, um, so the, the, the GoFundMe page is uh, the families of Firefighter uh, Akabu and Firefighter Brooks. And um, we are forever with their family. And I pledge to their daughters, to his daughters and his wife and all these family that this is, you have all this support behind you no matter what you need. We'll be here forever. Anyone else? I think that concludes today. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and sharing uh, the Brooks family and the Akabu family. I really appreciate everything. Thank you. This has been Breaking News.